Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another video. Well, this week's video is kind of like a follow-up to my last video. Basically, we're going to be posing the big question. Can we use Windows Vienna in 2025? And the short answer is, it may surprise you. So if you haven't watched my last video, please watch that so you get the full scope of what's going on here. If you don't know, Windows Vienna is a custom Windows Vista ISO made by YouTube user Vista6002. So this, this ISO gives basically a more purple theme to Windows Vista compared to the normal bluish arrow theme. And it also provides some new extras and feature enhancements to Vista that weren't present in the original version. So the computer we're running it on is more than enough to run the minimum version of Windows Vista with Arrow. It's a Lenovo ThinkSound at A58 with an Intel Pentium E5300 clocked at 2.6 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM, a 320 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive, and an, a well, a DVD drive, but that's in most Vista computers. And finally, the GPU is an Intel GMA X4300. So, what do you say? Let's fire this machine up and see how it runs. So like most of these OEMs, you just hit the power button to turn it on. I'll have a nice Lenovo splash screen. Think Center, a product of Lenovo. It's an Intel machine, so you got, some, got that Intel logo on started up. And then, I would like to tell you guys about the peripherals. We got, again, an E5300 at 2.6. We got a Dell S2240 monitor, which is a slim, more of like a slimline widescreen monitor, which I think Vista looks, would look beautiful on. I've run 7 on this monitor, and that also looks beautiful. Keyboard and mouse, we're not using the PS2 keyboard and mouse like last time. Instead, we're just using a normal Dell USB keyboard and mouse. The, 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 that, those came from a Dell Inspiron 530S. So I'll see you guys once we boot to the desktop. So now that we're booted to the desktop, see what I was saying about, well, Windows Vienna being very purple. You got some of the lighter blue themes like you got turquoise but then it's very heavy on purple so I really like these colors pulls up the Windows Welcome Center when you boot up but let's get to the tests so we got a couple apps on here to test web browsing office work and media consumption so that's pretty good for basically what most people use their computers for so for web browsing any of the, most of the modern web browsers today do not work perfectly on this machine, on Windows Vista. Like, Chrome is outdated, Firefox is outdated, and Microsoft Edge doesn't even work on this machine. So, you have to use legacy browsers, such as Supermium, which is made courtesy of Win32, who also made the Windows Vista Extended Kernel, which sadly I could not get to work on here. So... We're gonna use Supremium, which is based on, well, Chromium. And if you don't know, Chromium is the base of Chrome, and even some of its components were used in Safari. So, we're gonna see how web browsing works on Supremium. Let's just try loading a site that everybody uses, YouTube. So, it takes a little while to load because it's an older OS, but if you give it some time, I'm sure it will load. This is my other YouTube channel, if you wanna check it out, please do so. I make videos about air conditioners and just general travel on there, and elevators as well. So if you wanna check that out, feel free. Link is in the description. So let's take a look at a sample video that I have on here. So firstly, we're gonna test with like say, a slideshow style video. This is a, an HVAC slide, a slideshow of air conditioner photos. Yes, it's a weird interest, but it's a lot of fun. So, this is a slideshow that I made a little while ago, back in May. Let's take a look, see how it performs. So the audio sounds pretty good. Let's check what resolution, it's, oh, it's a little jittery, but I think that was just the transition. Now let's try with this, yeah, it's a little jittery, 720p. And the audio sounds okay, that's just the built-in speaker. However, if you let it warm up after a little while, YouTube playback is totally fine. So, let's try with another video that I have on here. Let's just go back, and we got, let's just pull up this video. Let's, let's see how it performs. And then this is, I'm not, this, 
This is, I believe, 10, 480p, and it's a little, it's a little jittery. But you know, like the main reason to blame? It's because YouTube's a very RAM-heavy website. But there's also alternative YouTube clients if you want to try using YouTube, like Invidious. Let's pull up Invidious on here, and let's go to my other channel. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to crank up the quality on this one because, well, you, Invidious was just taking a little while and then Papa Google is just trying to block, block, block every single Invidious instance. But it's tolerable, but it's very, it, it is very stuttery, but that's not, that's not good. So overall, for YouTube watching, I would not really recommend Windows Vienna, but that's probably due to the hardware. If I were running this on like a Core 2 Duo machine with more RAM, it would probably run a lot better. So if you're running this on like a Core 2 Duo machine with more RAM, I would probably recommend it. But let's just try pulling up the Mac 84 legs website, mac84.net, mac84.net. Here it is. Here's the Mac 84 website. He's a wonderful YouTuber, and I would absolutely recommend subscribing to him. He's actually been featured in one of my videos, the one of the BCF East Swap Meet. So, again, scrolling is nice and smooth. So if you mainly just want to use this to browse the web and don't really care about YouTube playback, Windows Vienna on this machine could be a good option. So I'd say overall, web browsing, I'd say it just barely passes the test, let's just say. Now, let's try with Office work. So, all modern versions of Microsoft Office do not support this. However, the latest version that's compatible with it, 2010, does work. Same thing with LibreOffice. The oldest, I'm not sure exactly the oldest version of LibreOffice that works. As far as I know, I think OpenOffice, Apache, o Apache OpenOffice also works on this machine. And with Supremium, Google Docs also works. So we got Microsoft Word 2010 installed on here. Let's just try typing a sample sentence. So we got some sample sentences open over here. Let's just try cranking up the font size. 72. But then let's just crank it back down to Calibri 12, which is what most people like. And then there's plenty of fonts installed on here because a bunch of fonts come with obviously Windows as well as MS Office. Like you can do Palatino Linotype. Or if you want to, the beauteous font Comic Sans. Chef's kiss over here. Chef's kiss. But for the sanity of your eyes, I'm just gonna go back to Calibri. So I'd say if you use Word 2010 or 2007 on this thing, document editing is absolutely possible. Same thing with PowerPoint and Excel. However, if you don't like Microsoft, there's Apache Open Office. LibreOffice by, the, well, the LibreOffice Foundation, as well as Google Docs. So I'd say it passes the, do, the document creation test. Now, let's try with media consumption and playback. You got iTunes on here. The, unfortunately, like, the latest version of iTunes doesn't install, but, like, the oldest version here, iTunes 12.1 from, like, 2014 does install. It's the last one with, like, the really pretty pinkish icon, like, the iOS 8 design. So... Let's try to test like how music playback works. Unfortunately, all this is copyrighted, but let's test with the Windows Vienna Sounds Remix. Let's press play. Oh, it sounds pretty good. So again, I'd say iTunes works well for music playback, but if iTunes and Apple really isn't your forte, there's also Win Windows Media Player and Windows Media Center on here. So let's try playing the same song using Windows Media Player. And it does have like the really cool visualizers, guys. If you guys want to check that out. I'm sure many of these old, I'm sure any of you guys remember the old XP visualizers, but here's an example of what the Media Player visualizers look like. I've never used them, but they're really cool in my opinion. I'm sure many of the Formula Winamp users also remember that. So Windows, so music playback is pretty good. Now, how about DVD playback? So it's basically a DVD of a bunch of random Dank Pods episodes, but it goes right into full screen when you play it and it also remembers where you left off. So I'd say DVD playback is pretty good on this machine. And like, I, I like the user interface that's provided with, well, Windows Media Player. Let's try skipping like to the, this random point. Oh, I'd say, 
again, here's a, this, it's a Dank Pods episode. So again, DVD playback is absolutely possible on Windows Vienna. Now finally, how about gaming? Well, I absolutely might, would not recommend gaming on here as Steam isn't supported and the graphics hardware on this machine isn't very good. So let's just end it right there by the, the final conclusion. Can you use Windows Vienna in 2025? Yes and no. If you know its limits, Windows Vienna is absolutely usable. But if not, I would not recommend using it fully, especially if you're not aware of the risks that come with running such an old OS in 2025. But if you want to run, like a, run it as like a fun side project on an old machine, absolutely. And I'm just gonna end the video right there, saying thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, watch, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all.